So, do you have any questions? What is your soup of the day? Uh, we have a mulligatawny soup. Oh, do you have any specials? We have a steak special today. Oh, how is that cooked? That's pan seared and then... Does it come with a side dish? Is it grilled? Can I have it steamed? So, what do you recommend? What kind of pie do you have? You an actor. Aren't you from Ohio? Any questions? Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov. edition of Lynx Perspective. I'm Mike Miller. My special guest today, John Stoughton. John's the president of the Leroy Boyd Scholarship Fund. Welcome, John. Thanks for being here, buddy. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I know that um, golf season is just around the corner. I know you play all the time, but... Um, Not as much. <laughs> Not as much as you want Not to. Not as much right? anymore, yeah. Uh, this has been going on for 27 years. Um, right. Just talk a little bit about it. What is a Leroy Boyd Scholarship Fund? <clears throat> well, Leroy Boyd Scholarship Fund was started about 27 years ago by a group of sports officials um, as a way to uh, raise money and develop scholarships to give back to the kids that we officiate. Um, it started out at the very beginning with a Rex Kern roast. Woody Hayes was in town for that, wow. if you can believe that. <laughs> That's pretty neat. That was way before my time. And um, the reason it didn't continue is because Woody Hayes passed away. So um, Mike Kilbarger and Ray DeLong, the founder, came up with the idea of having a golf outing uh, as a way uh, to raise money uh, mm -hmm. for these scholarships. And we've been doing it for 27 years now. Um, I've been on the board now for about eight, eight or seven years. And um, you know we're in our planning stages now um, of doing that. When the Leroy Boyd originally started, um, they gave away one scholarship. It was about $100. A um, couple years, they didn't know if they were going to be able to give any. And today, we're at a point where we're giving out eight scholarships that are all worth about $600. And then we are, uh, you know, our goal is to uh, be at 10 scholarships at $1,000 each. So we still have, you know, a vision of where we want to take the next step. And, you know, it's Fairfield County athletes um, that are graduating athletes or band members, but not necessarily uh, planning to... Uh, be involved in those activities uh, beyond high school. Uh, a lot of people may want to talk about Leroy Boyd. Who mm -hmm. was Leroy Boyd? Well, he was the <clears throat> he was an official from Lancaster, and he started the original associations for basketball, mm -hmm. uh, baseball, and football. And anybody that was an official, you required to attend meetings and training. <laughs> Contrary to what people Contrary might believe, what, yeah. uh, we do we do continue <laughs> our training on an annual basis. How long and, have you been officiating? Um, this is my thirty first year. Wow. Yeah, it's. It, I, I remember when I first started seeing all the old guys and listening to their stories, and <laughs> now I am the old guy telling the stories. So it's it's it's, it's interesting at best, but um, it, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Leroy, you know, he I never knew him, but he's the one that that started the associations, and um, you know, over the years, it's grown to other sports. Um, you know, football group probably has 100 people. I imagine basketball has that many. We have about 60 in our baseball, softball group. Um, so there's a lot of active uh, people in Lancaster area that are involved in officiating. And, um, you know, 27 years ago, 28 years ago, Ray DeLong had this vision of giving back um, to the kids we officiate. And, and uh, it's and been a lot of fun. To date, um, there's been over 100 scholarships <coughs> worth about almost $50,000. Right. Right, it's it's hard to believe, but yeah, it's we were you know, we keep a running total every year, and last year we went over a hundred. This year, uh, when it's all said and done, we'll be over fifty thousand dollars that wow. we're giving away, and it's 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 pretty neat. And, and, and our group is such that um, you know people apply for our scholarships, and uh, the day of our golf outing, after the outing is over, we award those scholarships because they read the committee recognized a long time ago that. You know, six hundred dollars could come in handy for a lot of different mm -hmm. ways. Uh, you talk to guidance people around the county, and they say, you know, if someone just goes to college as a freshman, they'll probably finish if they just mm -hmm. get started. Right. And so, a lot of times, the six hundred dollars, you know, I had one kid call one year and ask if he could buy a laptop with it. You know, it might be gas cards. It could be a lot of different <laughs> yeah. things you need to get started. But however you cut it, a kid starting college 
has a bunch of expenses. So that's money that they will get on April 29th at our golf outing and you know whatever fees or anything associated with their college career um, they can use that money for that. And the golf outing is coming up, going to be at Pleasant Valley, the 29th, is that a Sunday? Saturday? It's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. Sunday. It's going to start at 9 o'clock, $65 right. a golfer, three-person team, uh, cart, skin game, entry, 44 teams, food, raffle. Mm -hmm. um, there's also whole sponsors uh, for $35. Right. Be a, if somebody wants a sponsor, they call you? How they get? They can, they can call me. Um, they can, um, or send me an email, however they want. They may know a committee member that could ask them. Um, um, and who are the committee members? Yeah. Uh, well, there's myself. Um, we have Brady Pl uh, Brady Plesher, mm -hmm. who's my brother-in-law. Uh, Bob Bowers and Bill Sims is our treasurer. Happens to be one of our honorees this year. And then um, other people are uh, Don Casto, uh, Brent Dennis, Bill Keeley, Scott Beckwith, J.R. Bucklew. And then we have two associate members uh, that aren't officials, um, Stephen Long, who's Ray's son, and then my brother Rick is also an associate member of our group. And is there a rain delay or play for rains? Or a well, knock on wood, we've been pretty lucky. We had one year that there was snow and we couldn't play. And we had one year we had to finish after about 16 holes because of rain. For the most part, we're going to probably play in the rain, uh, but we always have a rain day. It's usually the following Sunday, uh, but so far we haven't really, one time I think we've had to use that rain day. Now, is there some competition amongst like football officials and basketball officials, or is it? There, no, not really. It's, you might get some competition in the, because there are three-man groups, mm -hmm. and there's two three-man teams on each hole, and you might have some internal competition going on there. Um, Imagine that. But you just couldn't, you just couldn't, you know, as, as, as trustworthy as officials can be, you wouldn't want to trust an official's golf score if you weren't there to witness it yourself. <laughs> now, um, this is open to male and female? Male and female, we get women that play. Uh, that's why we really call it a three-person outing. Uh, we get women who play, uh, probably contribute more than some of the men probably do. And again, that's coming up April 29th at Pleasant Valley, 9 o'clock. Right. Uh, $65 per golfer. Uh, and that's $65. It, ain't, it includes everything. Right. I mean, you don't, the only money you'd have to spend that day would be to purchase raffle tickets. And, you know, we have some really great raffle prizes. We have a 40 inch HD television. Wow, you talk uh, about some of the donors if you want to. I mean, well, the, the, they don't want the, to. The, television, the television we bought ourselves, we, yeah. that's, that's always been a key. You know, people. Um, are willing to spend money on that. And this year we got a 40 inch HD. Um, Doug Petty, who I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. to you, he works for Homedics, a sharper image, and he provides us, you know, the, these massage chairs and things that, wow. that, that are pretty expensive <laughs> things, and he donates those. Um, a former Lancaster resident named Dan Lewis works for the Cincinnati Reds, and he gets four box tickets for a game and a parking spot and some other things that come wow. along with that. And, I've got a couple uh, people that donate um, Columbus Clippers tickets. So we get some really neat stuff. Um, Lancaster Bingo, for example, donates an Ohio State golf bag. So we get some really neat stuff. And, and everybody, you know, of those items, uh, you know, it creates a lot of um, fundraising mm -hmm. for a raffle, which in turn allows us to upgrade uh, the amount of scholarships that we can give. So this year we're at 600. A couple years ago we were at 500. So we're trying to. You know, we hope our next step is 750, but our goal is to get to 1,000. Talking with John Stoughton, the president of Leroy Boyd Scholarship Fund, uh, coming up uh, golf outing April 29th at Pleasant Valley at 9 o'clock. Um, let's talk a little bit about the scholarships. Okay. You have one, Leroy Boyd, uh, male or female? It's, um, the scholarship applications, by the way, have been delivered to all the schools. Um, so all the schools have them, and anybody can go into the guidance office and ask, um, you know, from one of these scholarships. The Leroy Boyd Scholarship is uh, awarded to a male and a female. They're $600 each. You have to have a three-point grade point average to uh, qualify, but realistically, it really is going to take about a 3.8 with all the, with all the mm -hmm. applicants that we get. Um, a lot of times, a four-point or higher wins that. Um, we also have one that's um, uh, named after my father who passed away, you know, 16 years ago. Um, there's also an award for a male and female in the category of a 2.5 to a 299. And he always felt that, that those are the kind of people that run the world. And I guess, 
You know, you, you hear people talk about that a lot. Um, but that's been a popular um, with our applicants. Uh, we have a lot of uh, former winners, you know, who are attorneys today and mm -hmm. things like that. So uh, it's, it's pretty neat in that category. Then we have the Roosters, or excuse me, the DeLong Memorial. And that takes a 2.5 or higher. There's a male and female award for that. And that's basically children, grandchildren, um, or anybody's care who's given by a current official or a former official or retired official. And um, the only qualification is, is that the student lives in Fairfield County or, or attends a Fairfield County school and lives in Fairfield County. The official you know, may or may not live in the area. Mm -hmm. That's okay as long as they have an official in, in our life in that capacity. And we have a, a male and female for that as well. Um, Roosters Restaurants uh, sponsors a memorial award every year, or an honoree, in this case mm -hmm. with Bill Sims, who's a, um, an original uh, committee member for the Leroy Boyd Scholarship Fund. We thought it was long overdue to recognize the work that Bill does. Um, they sponsor, um, <coughs> or Rooster sponsors a, a $600 scholarship as well. And we award that to a male or a female. Um, we're not up to two in that category yet, but we hope to get there one day. And then finally, we have um, Tom Thaler Memorial. Uh, Tom was our memorial winner two years ago, our, our representative two years ago, and his family wanted to keep the award going in his name. And being that Tom's kids were involved in band, and you know, bands, when you think of high school athletics, mm -hmm. I mean, you really do think of the band, especially at football and basketball games. So we thought it was time to you know, put our reach out there a little further, and we award a band student. Um, all, the only requirement is that they go to a Fairfield County High School and have a GPA at 3.0 or higher. And it was a really popular category last year, and I expect it to be again this year. I've actually gotten one returned already. Wow. So it's been really, um, it's been a really uh, popular thing for us, and you know, so we're looking to get up to the you know the category of ten scholarships one day, and so we we've done a lot, but we have a long way to go. Is there a deadline when they have to be back in? No, you said they're in the counseling offices of all the schools. All the guidance counselors. Okay. We drop them off. We try to drop them off to counselors. We, we actually. You know, we, we know the mail can get it there, but we want to make sure mm -hmm. that we get it into the right person's hands, and that's what we have always tried to do. Um, the application deadline is uh, our, 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 um, on Wednesday the 25th, I believe, is when they order or when they select the, the winners, when the committee selects the winners. So I think uh, that prior Saturday, I believe, is the deadline. I forget exactly. I think it's the 22nd or the 23rd. But really, as long as I have them before the um, selection, um, we usually... Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I've never said, the only way I've, I've not taken a late one is if, is if they've already selected the winner. Right. And sometimes that's happened. But for the most part, you know, I understand things change and, you know, people put things off to the last minute. So we try not to penalize anybody in that category. Do you have a lot of people that come back? You mentioned that people that played in this years ago are now professionals. Do you have a, a lot of people that put this on their calendar and come back every year? Uh, we do. We have probably, um, out of the 44 teams that we can handle, there's probably 26 to 28 teams that you can count on every year. Um, you know, we sit down and go through them every day. We went through them the other day, and we probably came up with 30. So wow. of the 44 teams, we have about 14, really, spots that are open right now. Um, it, you can go out to Pleasant Valley and uh, get a registration form out there and sign up. It's a pretty simple thing to do. Um, and, you know, just find two of your friends that are willing to uh, we want to put up with you. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it really is a nice day because it's the first big outing of the right. summer. Now, who do you play with? You... Um, I have a, a couple of friends I've always played with. I mentioned Doug Petter uh -huh. earlier, and you know, I, I hate to, I hate to plug Chuck Watkins at Hobbles, but he'll <laughs> play fine. golf That's with him bad. as well. And um, you know, we 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 have a lot of fun, and it's more of the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's more of our group of six that. Uh, tries to sure. get on each other's nerves more so than we care about what's going on around us. Like banging garbage cans when people are swinging and stuff like that. That kind of stuff, yeah. yeah. Sure. That's, that's, that, that's a proper thing to do. I've, I've been there. Yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. Um, when uh, Do you bring back the scholarship winners? The, the uh, you know, it's something we've, we've talked about, and I don't know um, uh, why we haven't done it yet. I, we spend so much time making sure we get 
sponsorship sh signs covered and you know we with our fundraising you know I look at the names on there and you know I, I know I know two of them are attorneys and one's a doctor you know um, there's people on there who they probably don't even think about it. They mm -hmm. probably don't even remember that they won it, you know, 20 years ago or 25 years ago, something like that. So, so it's something we need to try to do, um, uh, but we haven't really done anything for that yet. I, I can't say we might have had a few people play, but um, not really a whole lot of them. And I know Pleasant Valley has been active in this for a number of years mm -hmm. and help out quite a bit. It's uh, you know, Ron originally before he passed away, it was his idea. Um, he talked about how well the charity news goes, and um, you know we, you know we really with his guidance is when we started doing it, and you know over the years it, it kind of sets itself up every year, and um, you know we like you said earlier we see the same people we have uh, family members to volunteer and help, um, it, it it just. You know, kind of run, it runs smooth, and I just think it's a, a product of doing the same thing over and over, and apparently doing it right. It must so. be. The um, now with the application, do kids have to write an essay or anything? Or is this a, There's a short essay. Um, it's in, it's kind of in a, a different category. It's, you know, with um, the Boyd and the Stoughton Award, um, it's basically how do you view the role of officials. It's a small essay. Oh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> well, it, you know, it's amazing, you know, what, what some of the kids come up with. And, and some of them are, you know, you, you could tell they're saying the right thing, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, the sooner you learn that, <laughs> the better off you are. Um, the DeLong Award, uh, being that um, it's, it's a family member who's mm -hmm. an official, uh, we ask them to you know, write a short essay on um, how that official has impacted their life. And then with um, um, uh, the Roosters, we ask, you know, about uh, basically the same um, as with the others. And the, the Feller Award, you know, we we uh, talk about um, a short essay about how being in the band ha has helped mm -hmm. you prepare sure. to work with the team because, you know, a band is is probably more in unison than a team is. If, if a team was in as much unison as the band, they probably wouldn't lose a game. Well, yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> so. um, do you remember the first game you officiated, whether it was junior high or Betty Ball? Well, I remember because, ironically enough, I wasn't even a, a licensed official at the time. Um, my brother happened to be a baseball official at the time, and he asked me to help him do a game that Ray DeLong was coaching. And I did the bases, and I had a makeshift uniform, and I kind of enjoyed it. And you know, somebody down there said, "Hey, do you want to do more games this mm. summer?" And I just said, "I don't have a license." And they said, "Well, I don't care." And I, I started doing them. The next year, I got my license, and um, I've been doing it ever since. Advice to somebody who wants to become an official? Well, take classes, take a class for it, which you almost have to do that. I guess they're required now, aren't they? They're required now, and, and really, if you if you want to do it, I mean, we we run a training class every spring for baseball and softball. But any sport that you'd like to officiate, there's training available for you, mm -hmm. and people who you can contact to help you um, stay on top of. Because the biggest thing you can do is teach someone how to officiate, and then them not have a support system. Right. And you know, we try to do that. Um, we started a class a few years ago. Our numbers have grown in baseball and softball, and um, it, you know, pick a sport you like. If you you know, and officiate it if you, if you think you like. It. If you like basketball, give it a try. You start with younger kids, mm -hmm. which is a little easier to do. It'd be better if um, you know the parents couldn't go to those younger league <laughs> games, but it's a lot of fun when the you know the kids themselves are a lot of fun, but the lower levels it, it's it's not the kids it, it's mom and dad more than anything else. Uh, uh, Del Barr, who yeah coached basketball, he always <clears> that <throat> Liberty Union won the state title in '93. He always told me the best place to coach is an orphanage. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's right. He's probably right. Have you ever had some time when you just thought to yourself that? This parents is. I'm not going to handle this well today. You know, really, the worst I ever saw was a couple years ago, and um, uh, the guy I umpire with Tim Shoemaker. He's coached yeah. basketball for years, and we're doing a tournament game over at Lakewood High School, and you know they have the winningest coach in the state for baseball, and they're playing a team, and this team is competitive. But they usually can't even beat Lakewood, and mm -hmm. and this parent. Is like overbearing, so loud. He's interrupting <laughs> the way the own kids perform, and he was embarrassing his own kid. This mm -hmm. kid was playing shortstop. I'm not even going to mention the school. Mm -hmm. and, and this kid was. I mean, we had to 
It's the only time we ever had to get rid of a parent. It was that bad, that, bad. that loud, that overbearing. I mean, it got to the point where we had to say, if you don't leave, we're calling the cops. It was, I mean, oh, his own wow. son, his own son was embarrassed and ashamed and, you know, and, and when his dad had to leave, the kid was fine too. He played better and probably had more fun and turned out to be a better game without that guy. Now, do you spend most of your time doing baseball and football or basketball? I just do baseball. Um, I never did any other sports. I never really had the time. Um, it, it's a lot of work. Um, the guys who, who do multi-sports, um, you know, my hat's off to them because you know, you, the schedule is, is so difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to a lot of times be available at 5 o'clock, and that's not always easy right. for people. And um, I just felt, you know, many years ago I could only, you know, really be able to do that from one sport. And How many games do you do a year? Uh, you do summertime too? I do in the summer. I, I, was, I was counting the other day. I probably will end up doing 60 games. You know, years ago I'd, I'd do 100 or 120. And, and I, you know, I think that's why I still enjoy it. Right. I don't know if anybody thinks I'm any good or not, but I enjoy it more. I'm sure you get a lot of people <laughs> giving their opinion, too. I get a few. I get a few, but I think I enjoy it more because I, I'm not doing so much of it. You know, a couple times a week is plenty. Um, I don't want to wear out my welcome, and I don't want anybody's welcome to be worn out on me either. So. Hey, we just have a couple minutes left, John. Um, before you leave, uh, final four predictions uh, for Memphis Well, we, 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 you know, Ohio State, I didn't think they'd get this far. I thought the, the way they were playing six weeks ago, I thought there's no way. And then, you know, now I think they're going to get to the final game, um, but I just don't think they can beat Louisville. I think Louisville's going to upset Kentucky, Ooh. and I think I'm, I hope Ohio State wins, but I just, I'm just i going to go with Louisville over Ohio State. Okay. So. Well, John Stoughton uh, is the president of the Leroy Boyd Scholarship Fund. Golf outing coming up April 29th at Pleasant Valley, 9 o'clock. Uh, $65 per golfer, three-person teams. Um, giving away some good money for scholarships. And we appreciate you coming on. Best of luck. We Thank hope you, you get some more money. You can do a lot. Uh, you know, and good luck with officiating. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Length's Perspective. I'm Mike Miller. Remember, until we meet again, let's make a difference. gets you moving because when you get moving an hour a day you'll have the energy to skate through anything so whether you like to work the half pipe kick the soccer ball around or ride your bike carve out some time every day to get moving but do it your way because it can be whatever you want it to be just get active wrap it up move it your way and be a player get up and play an hour a day doc check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day that's www.letsmove.gov